result sum calculations, let's take a stab at the annuity calculations. Remember, in annuity, we're talking about a regular payment in the same amount received on a regular basis. I give you $100 a year for 15 years, something like that. Okay? How does this work with the calculator? So for a simple example, let's take this. Um, I have a goal that I want to have somewhere in the future, I want to accrue $20,000 to take off on one hell of a nice vacation, okay? That then is my future value. I want $20,000 in the bank. And let's say that I'm going to take eight years to save that amount up. And I believe I can earn on my money, I can earn, let's say, 5%. How much money each year do I need to put in my account for eight years in order to build up that $20,000? So what I'm going to calculate is my payment in order to reach my goal. And the calculator will do that for us. First thing we do, right? Clear the memory registers, clear the TVM. And now I'm going to put this in. What do we want to remember? Either the payment or the future value. One or the other has got to be a negative number, just like present value, future value. I'm going to make this my negative number. So I'm going to take 20,000 as a negative and put that in for my future value. Okay? I'm going to put 8 for in for the number of years, 5 for the interest rate per year, and then I'm going to ask the calculator to compute what? my payment. How much do I need to put in each year? And this would be at the end of the year. Okay? And it comes out that I need to put in there $2,094.43. If I will do that every year for eight years, earning 5%, I will reach my goal of $20,000. Now, quick check. Does that sound reasonable? How much cash out of my pocket am I going to put in the bank? $2,000 a year for eight years is $16,000, and it's going to be earning some interest and compounding. So $20,000 sounds, yeah, pretty close to in the ballpark. And in fact, that is the correct answer. Okay? So what have we done? We said a regular payment or an annuity, if you like, a regular payment of this amount at this rate for this long becomes this. Let's turn it around. Let's take another example and say, and let's make this a, a little double example. Suppose I decide I'm going to put $200 per month into an account. And the annual interest rate paid on the account is 6%, but I'm going to shift that over to compound on a monthly basis. So I'm going to say compounded monthly. because I've got to keep all of this either on a monthly, quarterly, or annual basis. It's got to all be on the same compounding basis. Let's say I'm going to do this for mm, seven years. But what's going to happen over those seven years? It's going to compound interest every month, compounded monthly. What I would like to know, what I would like to calculate is how much money will I have at the end of this exercise? How do we make our changes? If it's going to compound, what, 12 times a year, right? N becomes 7 times 12, 84, right? And if I'm going to earn interest at 6% per year, how much is that per month? It's the annual rate divided by the number of compounding periods in the year, which is a half percent. So let's put the data into the calculator, and let's make the payment be the negative number. Step one, clear the damn calculator, okay? Don't you forget that, because if it keeps those old numbers in there, your answer won't have anything to do with reality. All right, here we go. I got $200 a month. I'm going to make that a, ne make that a negative and put that down for payment. My interest rate is going to be 6 divided by 12 equals whatever is displayed I put in. And I do that because what if I had... 7 divided by 12. 
Well, I'm going to have some decimals out there, and I'll let the calculator carry those forward when I put it in for the interest rate. For M, I'm going to say 7 times 12, which is 84. And then what am I going to do? I'm going to calculate the future value. Compute future value. And this says if I did that at the end of seven years, compounding monthly, I would have $20,814.70. Does that make sense? Let's do a rough, rough rule of thumb calculation here. $200 a month. That's $2,400 a year. $2,400 times 7 is what? Oh, that's a lot of math, isn't it? 2400 a year, and I do that for seven years. Zero, zero, 0028.2. That's 16.8 plus all the interest I'm going to earn. Yeah, $20,000 is in the ballpark of what that cash should grow to. So, indeed, for $200 a month for seven years on these assumptions, I can wind up with $20,000. for my vacation, for my retirement, or my bar bill. Hell, I don't know, okay? Lump sum calculations, annuity calculations. Annuity calculations, you either are trying to calculate the future value, so you know the payment, or vice versa. Now, we can still mess this up with you, right? We can say, if I put this much in and I want that much, what kind of interest rate do I have to earn? Or, if I know the interest rate, how long would I have to do that? in order to go from this payment to this future value. We can change any one of these variables, leave the other three constant, and the calculator will calculate what the missing variable is, whether it's the interest rate, the number of compounding periods, or whatever else, okay? And that's what people like I do when we design a test. We figure out how many ways can I screw this up for you and see if you really know what you're doing. All right, good.